welcome in. This is Mad G. We are we are here live streaming in New York City, and I'm gonna race to try and catch the sunset. Yeah, we're live here in New York City. I'm in Long Island City, Queens. And um, sunset's gonna happen uh, any minute now. But I'm gonna go ahead and try and uh, speed up and see what we, what we can catch. We'll go by the water, right right by the East River. Uh, the view of the uh, Manhattan over the East River. So we'll do that today. We're here by the uh, Queens Bridge, renamed. Uh, after the mayors who had the maximum, one of the maximum uh, terms, Mayor Koch. When I first came to New York City, Mayor Koch was the mayor at the time. And here I'm uh, navigating, crossing the street. It's very dangerous because uh, some parts have a signal, some parts don't. But uh, all around me, you see behind me the train tracks. They go to Queens Plaza, Queensboro Plaza. And uh, welcome, thank you for being here. Yeah, we, uh, I was about to go to the gym, but I saw we had a little extra daylight today. So I'm out here. Uh, I always got to watch on the ground in New York City. I'm sure you have these type of problems where uh, people don't pick up after the dog. I mean, I, 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 I'm actual, I love dogs, but people have to, you know, clean up after them. Um, there's a good, there's goods and neg there's pluses and uh, negatives to everything, to many things in life. It's always, I would say, having a, a pet is more of a plus. There's more positives to having a pet than any negatives. Because uh, the ultimate thing is they have, they have undying devotion, loyalty, their best friend. It is true what they say about pets. They are man's best friend or... We could probably re rephrase that to they are a person's best friend. So, uh, yeah. Last time I walked through here, we lost signal because I went in to get uh, dinner. And, uh, uh, you know, that's unfortunate. Both sorts of things happen. When, um, when you're trying to stream and uh, you, you. the buildings, you have drop dead zones. Exactly. Um, I guess that's the sort of thing that even with today's uh, technology, we still have uh, issues. Hey, hello, what's going on? Today, nice to see you. We're about to head over to the water, I'm walking straight towards the water to see what we can catch from the uh, sunset. It is, I am in a race now because I decided to get out late. So we may miss it, but we'll catch a little bit of the water regardless. I was gonna go do the gym just now, but I decided, let me see if I could, uh, Catch the sunset. Yeah. So yeah, as I was saying, you know, it's always I appreciate having pets. I had them before, but I was in a different was situation 
where I was able to afford that. Uh, I was in a different building, not building, but uh, I had a house, I had land, so it allowed me to have chickens and um, and dogs and cats. So. Yeah, we're in the fading de daylight. Man, this is another building that risen out of nowhere. And along, along as uh, the last room I did like this, we were walking along the same route and uh, showcasing so much of the tall buildings that are have risen in this neighborhood. <laughs> So it's uh, gentrification happening in this area of the city. I know they try to, different parts of the city as well, like in Harlem. I may have uh, missed, uh, hello, hello. Nice of you to be here. Cappy Lou, nice to see you. We are going to race over, catch a view of the water. We may have missed the sunset, but we're still going to go over there. We'll go over there by the water, East River, alongside, and catch a view of the Manhattan of New York City. We're here in Queens, New York City. So we're about to head over. Yeah, let's go. We'll stay there for as long as uh, my battery permits me on, on this phone. If it's a good stream, we'll switch over to my other phone and uh, continue. I have to set up a uh, I guess an appointment or something so we could do a music stream or at least a karaoke stream and uh, sometime this year in the next month or two I'll look to go to a music store and pick up uh, a guitar so we can start to learn and uh, and start singing and creating our own songs uh, that's something that I wanted to do it since I was a kid because uh, I grew up I saw I began to grow up in the 80s preteen early teen and then um, in the 90s I was a late teen into my early 20s so I cross across a lot of different um, decades 80s 90s 2000s 2010s but uh, those are my area um, my years where music was a integral part of what I do um, from, from pop 80s pop 90s pop and then um, tech techno and uh, oh yeah rap rap in the 80s as well and um, pop again uh, I, and in late 90s early 2000s I was listening to a lot of R&B well we got a uh, unsolicited add the channel I do not appreciate that if everybody wants to approach me for business opportunities they should try and oh, no, send no, no. me a they should sign us up number one sign up for my discord the link is the link is there on my profile and then send me a, uh, a direct message legitimate business opportunities or um, 
or to network or whatever, but not to promote yourself unsolicited on my channel. Do not appreciate that. So the, the great thing about today right now is um, the temperature is much warmer than it was the past three days, three, four days. So uh, I may actually break out into a sweat because I'm moving pretty fast. Uh, hey, Rob, how are you? You want to be a mod for me? Yeah, you know, when you're streaming, it's so it's so uh, difficult to keep track of those things when you're by yourself and uh, I guess mods are important for anybody who's streaming especially uh, I think we want to trust people that we know to do those tasks uh, we are not there yet. I'm, I would say another 10, 12 minutes. So we are headed right now to the water side, East River, East River, and we're going to see the view of, of Manhattan over the water, East River, East River, and uh, we're navigating the streets as we're heading over there. It's good to see people are uh, conversation, having conversation in the chat. I love to see that. Um, you could you could say I've been uh, I've been in many many chats over the past uh, three years. When I first got onto Twitch, um, I started off just randomly on my PlayStation. motorcycle passing yeah when I first came on to Twitch I, I don't know how because it was the beginning of pandemic was a close down so it's March 2000 March 2000 beginning of the pandemic and um I did a couple things. I had a PlayStation 4. I had a WWE 2K18 or 17 and 8, no, 16, 17, 18, and then a 19 eventually. And uh, and uh, I decided to just stream it because it said right there which which platform. I think that's how I ended up getting onto Twitch because it was something new. Um, it was not well-known, well-popular, of course, throughout this pandemic, um, became very popular because a lot of people were home and, uh, and people got started um, with, you know, people didn't have jobs. So they got started doing streaming, uh, becoming great conversationalists. That and that's what it takes to day. be successful. You know, definitely communicating with your chat. Um, and, uh, and uh, having good conversation. That's all it really takes. So I do um, apologize if I don't get to read your chat too well. But I'm on the move right now. Let's take a look, quick look at this at the scene so you can see. Take a look at that. Take a look. Take, take a look at how the sun's setting over there, past those two uh, towers. All right. We're gonna we're gonna get across this uh, another road. Very heavy traffic because you see right overhead. There's um. Hey, look at the uh, these guys on the on the truck. You guys saw that? They're just hanging out on that uh, scaffold. Uh, they parked that. I, I've seen that truck park around here in this neighborhood, and it's uh, it's like when they were building those big skyscrapers. Um, those guys were sitting up there taking a break, eating their coffee. So it's a it's a big um, 
example of uh, of people getting through. Okay, see, take a look on the side. You see, that's one of the good things about Long Island City because you could walk, look down some of the roads and you could catch a catch catch a glimpse of Manhattan, the skyscrapers. All right, we're gonna get closer and closer. Yeah, we're definitely losing a lot of daylight now. So I must have missed the sunset, but we'll, we'll, still, ca we'll still go over there and catch the water. And uh, in this location, Long Island City in Queens, it's um, a lot of, uh, lot of, lot of um, construction happening. So a lot of uh, new buildings, housing. Well, and the housing is not really for uh, affordable housing. That's another subject that uh, we could probably get into when we have a um, political discussion. Okay, see, so take a look down there, right down this, and you can see the Empire State Building over there. And we're looking from uh, in Queens. So that's a really, really unique view. All right, so we're gonna head, continue to head down. Trying to reset. All right. Sorry for the movement. I don't have uh, a um, what you call it. One of those things that adjust as you're moving to adjust the um, the vibrate. The, you know, one of those um, selfie sticks that adjust. So I'll go, I'm gonna try my best to keep it st still, but uh, I do appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and uh, here for the uh, for the view. See what we're happening. So how was everybody's weekend? What you guys been up to? I think I should. Let's, let's flip it over and you'll see a, a nice little view down this road. And you can see the Empire State Building that's lit right there. It's hard to tell. Unfortunately, a lot of, uh, a lot. I don't know why, but a lot of the um, neighborhoods don't have adequate lighting, and um, yeah, it's kind of jumping too much. So I'll zoom back out. Right about now is when the lights are coming on. They come on with the sensors, and uh, and they don't have enough lights in each neighborhood. So it's really. Uh, Really dark in a lot of the, in a lot of the neighborhoods. So, you know, a few a few of the um, people who do stream, uh, especially around New York City, will have times when it, we get when uh, we get into dark spots. But uh, in the distance, you can see the tip of that uh, building, Empire State Building. We're in the neighborhood of Long Island City. All right, I do appreciate you guys being here. Yeah, we're just getting started with our stream. And uh, I think I missed the sunset, but that's all right. We'll get by the water and have a beautiful view of uh, Manhattan, New York City. Okay. To my left, there's a train yard. Or the railroad that heads to Long Island, as well as the New York City train. Yeah, um, New York, uh, Long Island City 
is uh, right next to also one of those little rivers that's connecting uh, with Brooklyn and um, and a lot of a lot of these places have a lot of old warehouses where train tracks go right up to the warehouse and that's how like in the early 1900s um, they had utilized the way the, to uh, do trade so yeah water was uh, one of the key ways for transport now now in these days trucks are are the key ways to move things around interstate interstate across the country but uh, this is historically a one of the locations one of the hubs for for trade for storage um, different products and New York City is still um, one of the biggest trade cities in the world yeah uh, gimbal that's what I'm talking about I never heard of it until probably about a couple months ago someone was saying oh they weren't they're going to try out this new gimbal I had no idea what <laughs> what they're talking about but um, wow I'm gonna switch over to view we're getting so close to the water we're about two two or three blocks away and uh, and uh, you can see the last of the the daylight as we get closer you're gonna see the view that I see the last little bit of fading light in the sky and uh, but yeah that's good uh, definitely I, I need to get one um, maybe we could do a little fundraiser so I could uh, get one wow let's take a stop and a quick glance now we're gonna go from north to south over there there's the uh, Queensboro Bridge and then and as we we see Manhattan with the East River there we see the uh, two skyscrapers um, on the right is the Rockefeller and the left in the middle is the uh, Empire State Building there goes a police van and then as you can see all the leaves are off the trees we're in the middle of winter so I said I think we got about a month and a half more of winter to go but uh, it's been it has been a mild winter aside from the past couple days two three days we've had a very mild winter meaning above 40 which is very warm um, and I know other parts of the country and different parts of Canada it's been pretty pretty cold having a lot of winter uh, we, uh, New York here we've been fortunate that uh, we haven't had snow we have on, on those days when they call for heavy precipitation we had we had rain look at this view that's a bridge right here is Long Island City dug along the water and uh, unfortunately I don't have a great camera but um, I mean it's pretty good but I can't when it, well, for the Pepsi Cola sign it's too too bright and orange it, it can't, I can't really make out make it out but uh, here we are next to the water it is a beautiful view okay give me a second I'm gonna hold myself here I'll make a, my own now we can take a look there's Long Island City to the right in Queens Long Island City in the middle you can't really tell but there's a Pepsi Cola sign on the Queens side in the center there's a Queens Bridge that connects Manhattan to Queens 
Yeah, I know you guys over there in the mid middle of the country. It's been pretty pretty cold. Let's take a quick look at the, at the uh, water. There it is. The water coming in the car, into the rocks. Now you can see the reflection of the city in the water. Very quiet, serene, relaxing. That's an amazing thing to see the reflection in the water. Yeah, there's a uh, view of the New York City from the Queens side. And look at the clouds, how it's fading in the darkness. That last bit of daylight is, is fading. And there's, as we look down the East River to Lors Mahan, and I believe that last tall building looks small, but I think that is the World Trade Center area, way, way down there in downtown Manhattan. I'll center it so you know what I'm talking about, okay? It's centered. So that's the tallest one. Yeah, that was the Queensboro Bridge that they renamed um, Ed Koch Bridge. Queensboro Bridge, Ed Koch Bridge. Uh, Ed Koch was a mayor. I think he did three terms in New York City. Um, I caught his last term when I, when I moved into New York City. I was a, a very young teenager and uh, I was in high school and then they had um, when he finished his, his last term um, they had an election and then the, the first they ended up um, electing the first um, African American mayor David Dinkins and um, And he was he only had one term. Then after when he went trials when he tried to get reelected, uh, Republican Mayor uh, Rudy Giuliani became the mayor. And um, and he was he was the same he was the same type of person as he was as he is now. And. Um, New York City was thought to he, th he everybody said he was thought to have been the uh, America's mayor. No, he was a, he was a mayor for the few, the privileged. He was a police type of. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm not gonna bring in the hate that these type of people bring in. So we'll we'll talk positivity. Um, yeah, so. Here's a view of some of the, on the Queen side. I'll go, I'm gonna do a full 360. And these are some tall buildings. They were, these were one of the f first few tall buildings in, um, in Long Island City, Queens, uh, for neighborhoods. And um, eventually it's, it grew to have more in this, in this area. 
it wasn't a populated uh, location, but now with these tall buildings, um, a lot of people have moved into this location. So all these are brand new, these, these buildings on this side, and all this over here. So a lot of people probably paying high rise costs to be next to this water in these high rise buildings. Yeah, so there you have it. Queens, uh, Queens on the right side, and uh, you see the Queens Bridge in the center and connecting to Manhattan, uptown, uh, around 59th Street Bridge. It is a 59th Street Bridge, Queens Bridge, um, Ed Koch Bridge, whichever one you want to. to. So this is a, we'll take a, I'll hold it here. Welcome in, people. We are doing a live stream. We're, we're in Long Island City, Queens, in New York City. And we're here next to the water, East River. East River that connects, that uh, divides um, Manhattan from Queens. Manhattan from Brooklyn, Manhattan from Queens, and also Manhattan from the Bronx. New York City is uh, five boroughs, five locations, and uh, those locations are, yeah, so, yeah, Ed Koch, he was, um, everybody loved him. Uh, he was able to speak and communicate effectively with the two different parties, get things done, um, and Unfortunately, there's not a lot of um, politicians that are able to be as, a, as effective. But I think uh, what I'll do this year is do some reading and um, consider, heavily consider running for a political office. That is going to be something I'm going to start to seriously consider. But uh, until then, I'm going to stream and, uh, and uh, see what else we can afford to do, but uh, yeah, the, you know, there's nothing like the beauty. Now you see how it's, well right now the, it's getting pitch dark over there. I mean, if I, if I turn this way, I mean, it, it, you, I could still see a little bit of daylight in the, in the, in the far behind those buildings. Uh, in the distance, you see on, on top of the buildings, you have the um, Empire State Building and you have the Rockefeller Center. Um, but but back by the by, towards north, it's really it's really pitch dark. Look at the reflection of the of the uh, tall buildings in the water. And uh, below, in the center. You see um, the FDR Drive. FDR Drive, uh, no trucks is permitted to be on there, just um, cars. No commercial traffic. And uh, it's like a vein. Uh, important, it's an important part of uh, trans travel, of movement. It goes along the uh, East River as well. Starts from downtown all the way up north to up, of, uh, Upper Manhattan before uh, there's a bridge that connects it to, to the Bronx. But, let's see, but it continues and it changes its name from FDR Drive to the Harlem River Drive. But there is a connection to the Bronx with a bridge. Uh, I think it's called the Second Avenue Bridge. And uh, from there, could take other roads, um, highways. Yeah. 
is a live view of New York City. And I do apologize if I'm not able to uh, respond quickly to your to your chat because there are delays. And uh, unfortunately, that's what happens with uh, when you have to depend on the cell service, which may sometimes fluctuate. It may be great, and sometimes it may be very slow. Indeed, Captain Lou, New York City. I've lived here in New York City for all my adult life. Aside from the times when I was in the military, I was here in New York City. Got a nice little wave. They are splashing against the, the rocks. Let's take a look, if you can see. So this, uh, this city has, has had so much history and the, the history that, I've, that uh, I remember is unique because it, I came at the end, the last year of, uh, of uh, the 80s, that was 89, uh, first year in high school. and. Um, It was a different type of culture. Was I shocked? No, I was pleasantly surprised because there was so many. I loved the from the from the first day I came here. Um, I loved going to school. I loved to meet a lot of people uh, in school from different cultures, different nationalities. Uh, it is an international city. I think uh, that's what kept me here because uh, when I played sports in high school, uh, I played with people that, from all over the world. And uh, it was a good... Uh, good feeling to know that I can relate with somebody that came from a different culture, different background, 
I mean, I myself, as a Native American, can relate with people from different countries or different backgrounds, different nationalities. Even if they were born here, they came from different nationalities for the most part. Not, not many indigenous people have made their mark on American history because uh, they were anyway um, we'll go into politics in a different stream today we're going to relax enjoy the quiet sounds of the river as you can see the, the lights reflecting off the water and the the waves splashing against the rocks. Yeah, this is um, a very beautiful evening next to the water and um, it is a, a lukewarm, well it's a very cool evening but it's warmer than usual so I think we're Oh yeah, um, I think that's a good idea. Let's see how we can change that. Do you guys know what's the uh, thing to change the game? This is indeed a very beautiful setting.
yeah, that's why I want to do more of these uh, streams by the river. learning You can hear the uh, sounds of New York City. The uh, sirens are are going off. At the end of the day, we're all from the same earth. 
and uh, one of the things we should do as a society is to learn how to live together in a society because we're all connected now anybody from the world anywhere can um, can tune in and you can make friends from everywhere well see we got uh, we got Germany we got US all right here And we all follow different people from all over the world and, uh, and vice versa. Downtown. Exactly. And you also hear the other sounds. You hear the sounds of the kids enjoying themselves in a the little playground over there. It's kind of dark. Can't really see inside the playground, but it is, uh, you can hear it. Under one, the one sky. Wow, that's a that's a beautiful saying. Oh, so Rob, you changed your name, huh? Just realizing it. See the helicopter. You hear the helicopters. Let's zoom in over there. And there it is. A little dot in the sky. With all the all those helicopter over Manhattan. There is a um, he helicopter landing pad in different locations.
there's a small plane that's also traveling low across, across the city. And at a higher elevation, another plane. So definitely lots of uh, aviation traffic over the city. Of course, we have three major airports in the, in the area. In New Jersey, we got the uh, Newark, I mean, sorry, the uh, Newark Airport, yeah. Here, here's a little little uh, tugboat, or a little boat. So, we have um, LaGuardia Airport, which is all um, by the water in, um, in East, is East Elmhurst? East Elmhurst, Queens. And we have Jam Jam Jamaica. In Jamaica, Queens, we got the uh, yeah. yeah, no problem. You uh, do appreciate people who come in often and support each other. Whatever your aspirations or goals you guys have. We should support each other as much as possible. Yeah, JFK Airport as well. Um, I'm very close to LaGuardia. Um, probably about 25, 20 to 25 minutes, depending on traffic. 20 to 25 minutes away from LaGuardia. From JFK, probably about 45 minutes. Maybe a few more, but depending on traffic. It could be an hour and a half. Uh, I know prime, prime times of travel during the day uh, when the airports have more, more traffic. That's when it's uh, will be difficult to get there uh, sooner. But uh, Jeff K, LaGuardia in um, are in Queens, New York City, and Newark, of course, is in New Jersey, Newark Airport. But either way, uh, these are the three main international airports to get into into New York City. Sounds like the cops' cars with their sirens in Midtown Manhattan. I gotta learn how to change game.
Hi Rob, um, let's, let's make you a mod. Yeah, any help would be great. Especially you guys always tuning in. That's the people I need. I mean, I, I randomly stream, but I usually do it during the evenings. And, um... I know I mod for a few people. It's, uh... But really, it's a teamwork. Usually uh, somebody, even if they're just turning off, with a few uh, people watching, uh, people within their communities can uh, help each other out. I do, I do help mod as much as possible. I mod for three, four people. Uh, Miss WrestleMania, uh, Valpaca Chronicles, Gin and soda, and um, carry. So yeah, it is tough work and. Um, even streamers with just one or two people definitely need need people to step up and uh, help out. It's, it's really important. It's a vital, important part of uh, streaming. People are friends. I call everybody here my friends. Yeah, my mom, I've been watching her over a year plus. I watch a lot of people stream and uh, what's great about uh, Twitch is you can just turn, tune, turn it on, tune in and find anybody. And uh, you do be able to make some friends. Of course, uh, you may never meet the person, but uh, at least you have uh, communication and connection with people in chat. And that's something that uh, was, was like something that was missing and needed during the pandemic. Now everybody's getting back to their normal ways, even though we still have this pandemic across the world. Most, what's what's good is everybody, not everybody, but majority of people have gotten their um, vaccines. And that has helped stop the, stops the spread of the, of the heavily contagious virus.
guess the uh, I guess that's how I helped get become a mod because I uh, I was either asked or uh, I was offered somehow to help with the trolls and chats and that's how I became mod uh, right now um, it is 626 almost 630. Exactly, East, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Let's take a look at these waves coming in. It's already uh, after midnight for you, Cap Capi Lou. Nice of you to be here this late at night, early morning. So we're here today. Um, Enjoying a quiet evening right next to the East River. I'm on uh, the Queens side in Long Island City, Queens, looking at Manhattan. So we're here in New York City, getting a view of the East River on the east side of Manhattan, Midtown Manhattan. I have never been, I've never boated any any of the rivers. I have never been in boats. I've been in a, in a small little canoe, um, but not in the States. I was in Central America. And uh, the other the other boats, I've been in boats. The uh, There's a boat that connects, that takes us, there's a shuttle that goes from Staten Island to Manhattan. I mean, I've taken that a couple times. You know, one day, one day we should take that trip. We should take that trip. I think uh, in a couple next next week or so, we maybe maybe we could take that trip early morning. We'll try to catch a sunrise, and uh, we'll take that we'll take that trip that I that I took so many years ago when I was a kid. I took that um, Staten Island ferry. That's what it's called. I've been on that. I actually went on a date once uh, with someone that I met off uh, of a dating app. Uh, one time date didn't work work out, but we but we uh, took the boat, the Staten Island ferry from Manhattan to Staten Island, and we took it back, and we saw the Statue of Liberty along the route. That was that was after I left the military. So yeah, I'll probably do that um, this week. I, would probably, I think we could do it this week. So the next couple days, maybe not Monday, but uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Staten Island Ferry, yes. That's the. Um, I think I remember paying a, a token from Manhattan to go to Staten Island, but I didn't pay 
Are you coming back off of Staten Island? I can't recall if I paid anything or not. Yeah, when I was a teenager, to pay, to pay entry into the subway, New York City subway, they had little tokens. They had like a little circle in the center, and it looked, it was like a coin, like a coin that you go to one of the, um, one of those um, arcade places where you can um, play a lot of games. So it was a token like that. And I, I remember it was about a dollar. It was like around 1989, 1990. Then it changes the price and the price went up. Me, I was originally from California, Los Angeles, California. I came to New York City as a teenager. As uh, born in Hollywood. Both my brother and myself were born in Hollywood. I have a younger brother that's two years younger. And a uh, sister that's four years younger. She was born in Beverly Hills. So, originally from California. But that's, uh, you know, when you communicate with people, you learn and you grow. And it is very true what they say, you learn something new every day. And I may come back to this spot and find something brand new to talk about or to discuss about New York City. It's, um, there's so much, so much history behind it. A lot of negative, a lot of good. But, yeah, so one of the things I take away and it kept me here in New York City is that it is an international city where you can practically meet anybody from anywhere, any part of the world. Every city has flaws in its, uh, in its planning of the system, of the systems that it has. But um, there's one thing about me is I always have positivity I was in um, I was in the Marines, U.S. Marines. I was stationed in uh, my first station was in California, um, towards San Diego, in that location, and um, I was there for two and a half years, and then I went one year into Japan, and that one year in Japan is when the World Trade Center. Um, uh, plane attacks happened and uh, we were all in lockdown during that time and uh, when I left the military um, and completed my four years of active duty I um, I traveled down from New York towards um, south. I went to Florida, then towards Texas. And in Texas, I encountered a lot of, a lot of things that are happening right now in the past uh, two years. Well, it's been, it's been always happening, but it's been never more prevalent than when we're gonna get a little bit of politics, but it's just, it's not politics, it's news, it's informational. We're just having discussion. So I don't want people to be afraid to discuss. But this is my story. Uh, one day maybe I'll write a book, but I did travel a long trip, um, a day and a half south to the south. And um, when I was in Texas, I encountered um, a lot of hatred, a lot of, a lot of the racism and um, and I'm right there, freshly out of the military. And 
and uh, people again of course were afraid because of what happened with the World Trade Center so um, I would understand people's fear but also people should never be swayed persuaded into believing the hate believing the lies believing the misinformation which is what's been happening in the past uh, administration Uh, no, no, I was never in. Uh, I, I visited 29 Palms for do, to do a training, but no. And I remember when I was there in 29 Palms uh, and did some training there, it was very cold at night. It was like uh, we're in a desert and uh, we were in bunks, or not bunks, but the. Um, we put up the tents and. Uh, wow, well, it, it was so cold. It was unbelievable. But uh, we did some training exercises. It was good because uh, we trained in the middle of the night. Really cold. And uh, one thing that was um, that I brought with me from from civilian life was the uh, Direct TV, little satellite. I took it with me. I traveled with it. It worked. It was amazing. Nice of you guys to be in here. Two day left over. Uh, Capilou and Rob. All of you guys are coming into my stream. I do appreciate you. You are an uh, important part of uh, the community that we're building here. And we're having a nice discussion. Um, my, uh, let's see how much battery life I have in my phone. It's at 34, so we're basically at a minute per bar. Um, so we're at 34, so that gives about roughly 30 minutes with my phone. I was in Japan for in, uh, 2000, year 2000, into, into 2001. No, no, I was in Japan 2001 going into 2002 I was I was there for that year and uh, when I was in Japan I got to walk around um, by myself I had I had a lot of vacation days so I took advantage of that and I walked around and I stayed in a couple business hotels which is a very affordable and uh, comfortable uh, hotels it was it was um, it was a decent price and uh, I got to experience eating some nice Japanese food I actually met somebody in uh, while I was in California station in California and uh, I met a Japanese uh, uh, lady and she and uh, exchanged numbers with her it was just so happened because I was uh, taking the bus she took the bus so I met her and um, and then I gave her a call when I ended up being in Japan and uh, and we went on a few dates when we were in Japan. Now, I don't know how we did it, but we had a big language barrier. And uh, so we nothing came from that, but we did have some nice dinners together, a few dinners. Ed, Edwards, yeah, that's, uh, I remember, is that a little bit north in California, northern California? I think I also went up, up to a, a location north northern California to do some training as well, and we, we went into, we did some, uh, we went with a lot of trucks, we did some training, uh, I remember what we did, we did some, um, we did some um, urban warfare training, and that was new. So we did some paintball fighting type of thing. Um, that, that, that was brand new, I think that was brand new at the time. And that was on 2000, the year 2000, I remember. And uh, so they had some abandoned uh, 
old housing from from one of the air, air from, from one of the bases and uh, it was like abandoned it's like a like, like a ghost town so they used it for training and it was it was good I um you know the first first time I drove was in the military first time I drove anything and it was a tractor um, so that was my specialty my military occupational specialty was the uh, becoming in a, in engineer, in a, with the engineering, with the engineers, I was a heavy equipment operator. Operator. So I, um, so I got into tractors, and that was one of the first things I drove from forklifts, um, backhoes, the uh, loaders, the, um, the, the the bulldozers, the uh, graders, road graders. Um, so, uh, yeah, north of LA, I remember exactly. And um, and so when I was in one of those places for training, I took the tractor and I and I practiced my my turn signals on on the tractor. And the guy's saying, uh, you know, it's like you're you're doing you're doing all the turn signals and everything. I said, yeah, because I'm I'm practicing for my road test. So I ended up getting my uh, my first license in California while I was stationed over there, my driver's license, and I took that with me. Uh, and eventually, when I came back to New York, I had to change my license, driver's license, to a New York license. Yeah. Um, A heavy equipment operator is uh, part of the engineers in building construction, roads, building buildings. Uh, uh, what you have, you know. If you want to build a ditch, take the road grader and build that. Very versatile. Um, you know, I. Uh, when there's a lot of snow, I can go and work at the airport and clear snow. This year we didn't have any. This this winter, but north, of course, in different different parts, definitely had the snow. But but I've been coaching uh, coaching football, soccer, and uh, I've been taking advantage. I, I've taken advantage of the opportunity to coach during this winter. So yeah. During the week, my days of coaching is Mondays and Thursdays in the evenings. And um, I get a lot of, I got a lot of satisfaction in my time invested in, because you're, you're passing along knowledge to people, to little kids who will in turn become young adults and they will continue on but at least, you know, you become a good role model, a mentor, and, um, and you teach them little skills, not just, not just how to play, but how to be, be a good civilized human being in, in society. And uh, That's something that I've beca that's become my, my one of my lifelong missions to continue to coach. I started coaching uh, when I was 19, 20, 20 years old. And uh, I realized that I wasn't gonna become a professional player because I wasn't getting that opportunity. There was no professional leagues at the, at the time. So it said, instead of wasting time, maybe trying to find a flight to some European country and try to somehow walk my, myself into a team, they would have probably never accepted me because I wasn't trained to play at a high level. 
and 19, 20 years old, um, there was no, there's a, no, there was never going to be an opportunity for me. I realized that, and I knew that. I was one year in, in college, so I said, I'm going to quit playing college. I played one year in college, but I quit after one year, and I decided to coach instead. And uh, I, I have a lot of satisfaction as a coach. And there you can see the traffic on the uh, FDR drive. Going left is, is going south. Going right is going north. Let's see if we could zoom in a little bit. There we go. You can see it's kind of blurry, but that's how the traffic is on the FDR drive. So we had a nice view of the city. We've got 18% left on the phone. So um, we're gonna start to say uh, good night for the time. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna once again um, do another stream in the next day or so. Uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow after practice I can try and go to a um, do some karaoke I've been saying I wanted to do it but I never um... so I think tomorrow night we'll try to do our first music stream and do some karaoke and I do appreciate you guys uh, tuning in here uh, being here for the stream um, so uh, we'll say good night now because uh, we're losing battery so have a good night everybody wherever you may be uh, sleep well and may you have a great week coming up I look forward to seeing you guys again. Um, thank you so much. Uh, if you guys want to raid somebody, um, give me a quick couple names. Other, other, otherwise, um, thank you guys for being here. And um, all right, let's do it like this. If you guys want to raid somebody with music, just chatting, or a different IRL. So let's do it like that. Let's put a tripod out here and have another look with me and the city in the background. Good evening guys, thank you guys for being, for being here so much. Who shall we raid? Any suggestions guys? Okay, guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see. You. Let's see if we, what we got here. Um,
Okay, so let's raid somebody from Portugal. Sophie's Galaxy. We'll raid there. And uh, they're doing some gaming, I think. Alright. Let's raid there. Thank you so much for being here and I do appreciate you guys uh, for being here. So uh, just send them our, our, our greetings and we will see you next time. Thank you so much guys for being here. As you can see, if uh, you subscribe, you could uh, get a couple of my emotes. I have another one. I have another one that's uh, still being uh, processed, so I, I am trying to get some extra emotes. Have a good night, guys. Don't worry.